companion characters are some of the most powerful storytelling tools that a storyteller at Bioware can use, and that's mainly because they can evoke emotion in a player like no other character in the game. They're helping you in your adventures, they're helping you in combat, they have opinions on story. You really build a rapport with them, and because you build that up when they get hurt or something happens to them, you know, you really care. Companions in the Old Republic, much like in every Bioware game, are a key part of the experience. When we first started figuring out the companions for the different classes, step one was the basics. Things we knew we needed to have in there somewhere. Things that were going to touch on sort of the cornerstones of Star Wars. So we knew we wanted some droids, you know, you wanted some big aliens, you know, you wanted sort of the lovable people, you wanted the romantic groups. We've crafted this game around the idea of you and your sidekick, just like Han Solo has Chewie, Luke has R2. Companions aren't just pets, so to speak. They're much, much more. They're more powerful for once. They level up alongside you. They have their own skills, abilities that they unlock over time. They use them rather intelligently. We spent a lot of time on the characters working with the writers, especially on the ones that were the, the love interests is probably was always the thing, is, is we'd come up with a character and we'd, we'd want to give that face a certain uh, character, right? So you give them kind of a, a bent nose or a big scar across their face and, and the writers are like, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be romancing this guy and, and you just disfigured him. Uh, so, so we'd have to go back to the drawing board. Fantastic. Glad you could open up. With over 40 companion characters in the game, one of the things that allowed us to do was have a huge variety in the experience, not just within one class, but class to class. They're wildly different experiences. We have the most evil evil, the most good good, and a lot of very nuanced characters. People are not just tied to light side, dark side, and it takes a little bit for characters and when players are playing, uh, for them to sort of get used to it. What we ended up with is making sure that every class gets access to the five roles of companions that we have in the game, but not necessarily in the same order, because that is dictated by the story. What we did there is try to make sure that you got the role that is most useful to you um, at the earliest point in time. For example, if you're playing a Inquisitor, we give you a companion that is a damage taker. He will take damage, he will hold the enemy taunt them and make sure that they're attacking him, allowing the Inquisitor to stand back and use his abilities. Customizing uh, your companion is important, much more important than it was um, in a Bioware or a single player game, because you're in this world with thousands of other players, and they also have companion characters, and we want to make sure that we differentiate those companion characters. We have appearance kits that you can actually change the entire appearance of your companion character. You have, um, when you get vet as a Sith warrior, she's a blue-skinned Twi'lek, um, but you can actually change her skin color and her facial features and make her look different. When you first get a companion character, you're going to know them as you knew them through the plot. So that's a lot different than knowing them personally. We have differences. The way that comes out in our game is through the affection system. So both by buying gifts or by saying things that they like in conversation, you gain affection points with them. This opens up new conversations, new quests, and sometimes some pretty radical departures from what you might expect. There are characters with dark secrets, there are giant, convoluted, interesting plots, and some people who are completely not what they appear to be that you would never, ever know if you just left them on your ship and didn't talk to them. Watch your back, Kaleo. I'll watch yours. You can watch mine. One feature that we have that I haven't seen in any other MMO is the ability to actually customize the behavior of your uh, companion. In our game, you can actually go in and you can tell the companion which abilities you want them to use and which ones you don't. They're a, a real member of your party and they have a full selection of abilities. Um, and in addition to that, they're actually able to do things such as do your crafting. We have uh, crew skills, which uh, allows a companion character to actually craft for you. They'll build with crafting materials um, the crafted items you want them to build. It's like you're the taskmaster, well, especially if you're a Sith, and uh, you know, you're getting them to, uh, you know, to make the stuff you want them to make. You're more to me than just my master. You do know that, don't you? You're much more than a Padawan to me. I thought so. Romances bring a depth and a complexity and a realism to the feel. It feels like these are real people. Say it with me. I'm better than Temple in every possible way. 
obviously the love triangles and things like that can bring a little bit of extra tension there. They're not things that you have to get involved with if people are not into the romance aspect. Uh, but if it was missing, I think it would seem very strange. Good behaving. Did you notice? Of all the companions, probably Vet is is my favorite. She's sassy, she talks back, and, and you're like this evil Sith Lord guy in training, and you just get to shock her when you want to. It's, it's just all really well done. Doesn't even hurt anymore. For pure, just squeal excitement, I love Blizz. The first time I saw Blizz, I was incredibly excited. The first time I saw uh, Randy Beagle's writing of him, Blizz is so charming. I want a plush toy of Blizz more than anything else in our game. I think mission statement number one was the uh, companion needs to be something positive. That meant a lot of work, a lot of iteration on uh, features like pathfinding, artificial intelligence, and their abilities to make sure that they don't do frustrating things. I think we really achieved a point where they're going to feel like a solid addition you know, one of the things is is for me in, in, in any of the Bioware games with the companions is always kind of that first decision where now you have more companions than you can, can travel with, right? And the idea of even leaving one of them home is, is painful. I think that's I think that's when you know you've really you've you've developed good companions. I think you're gonna find uh, players are going to talk about their favorite companion characters uh, once they start playing this game. It's gonna be one of the, the touch points of Star Wars the Old Republic.